And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'm Danielle Boudreau. I am the rules coordinator with the um, Department of State Lands. And we're going to go ahead and start off this meeting. It's our rulemaking advisory committee meeting number two for our rule for um, division. Well, it's 141-088-250 restrictions on public use of Crump Lake. And we are having some technology issues. So um, we did anticipate having a PowerPoint that we're going to have, but I'll just read through those things and share um, my screen for uh, the Word documents we're going to go over for everyone. Um, now, at this time, I'd like to ask my uh, fellow DSL uh, co-workers in the room to go ahead and introduce themselves. Amber McKernan, Surreal Property Program Manager. Sean Zimmel, Property Manager. Brian Cochran, Real Property Policy Specialist. Okay. Our uh, meeting participants in the room to Blake Norbert should be on. Ryan Nias, Oregon State Police. And then um, I'll call on folks um, in Zoom to go ahead and introduce themselves. If you could just state your name and your affiliation, and that'd be great. Um, I'll start with uh, Tyler. Yeah, this is Tyler Dungannon, uh, Oregon Hunters Association. Uh, Sergeant Tag. Uh, Sergeant Tag, Oregon State Police. <laughs> And then uh, John. Yeah, John Muir, Oregon Fish and Wildlife. Ted. Uh, <clears throat> just a member of the public interested in the discussion. Thank you. Les. Les Anderson, I'm Chris. Good afternoon, Chris Castelli, Oregon Department of State Lands, uh, Interim Legislative Coordinator. Terry? Hi, I'm Terry Graves. I'm the Outreach and Compliance Coordinator for our ADV program and also for camping on state lands. I'm here mostly just to observe a RAC meeting um, in preparation for one of my own in the future. <laughs> uh, Gary Curtis just joined us from DSL as well. Gary, can you introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is Gary Curtis. I'm the uh, statewide archaeologist for the Oregon Department of State Lands. Excellent. All right. So now we have our PowerPoint, and I was hoping to not have the Zoom stuff at the top. Yeah. <laughs> it should. You don't see that. Well, you don't see it on that. Yeah, but there's people in the room. Okay, can we live with that? Yep. Okay, <laughs> all right. So our meeting participation protocols is um, each person, both present in person and on Zoom, who wishes to speak will be asked to raise their hand. <laughs> For Zoom participants to raise your hand, put the reaction near the bottom of your screen and click raise hand or if you're on the phone by pressing star nine. For technical support, please message us in the chat and please keep your mic muted unless it is your turn to speak. Members will be called on in the order in which their hands are raised. And we ask that all, all participants be respectful of each other and DSL representatives. All right. You're on. Okay, so our operating 
procedures and apologies, it may take a little while to read this because there is a glare on the screen. So a consensus model will be used to facilitate decision making, instances, background, training, and inventory process where the RAP members strive for recommendations that they can accept, support, live with, or agree not to oppose. RAC meetings are considered public meetings and are open to the public. And members should be advised that all rulemaking records, including formal documents, rule drafts, meeting summaries and exhibits, meeting recordings and communications are public record and may be released in response to a public records request. Communications refers to all statements and votes made during meetings, memoranda, work projects, emails and correspondence and documents or material developed to show the goals of the rulemaking. And so we also have a slide about our interested parties. Interested parties are non-voting meeting attendees. They're invited to observe, but not permitted to participate during RAC member discussion. They are able to provide a timed comment as time allows after RAC members have concluded business. At a later date, after the RAC process has concluded rules and will hold a public hearing prior to consideration and adoption. So far, are there any questions about participation and protocols? Okay, thank you. So the first thing we're going to go over is the rule language that um, came out of the last RAC meeting. And I'll share that now. And um, then we'll go over, we sent the rule language to the Department of Justice, um, to our attorney there for his feedback. And I'm also on two screens, so there's a little delay on my part. Okay, you're on. Uh, you're, you're sharing the, yeah, the draft. You're okay. on. <laughs> It's I'm good. sharing the correct one, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that one does not look to be the one that we have a copy of, or am I looking at the one? So, so have you have two copies. copies. There's two copies in the room. The one that we're looking on the screen is the shorter one, the one that's in black and white. The one that is in color in the room um, is the one that came back from DOJ, and that's gotcha. the second one we'll talk about. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So this is what we ended with last time. Yeah. All right, this is what came out of the last RAC meeting, RAC one. Um, and then DOJ yes, had some input on the two developer. Yes. Shortly. Okay. And does so, those online have copies of that in the email? Um, they have copies of what is on the screen in email. That was what was sent out to the RAC. We have not sent out the GEO. DOJ copies, but that's why I want to share it. We'll go over it. Great. And then we can send it out after the meeting. Um, so. it, um, Sean, do you want to go ahead and talk about? Yeah. What we this draft, yeah. yeah. So this again is the, the first draft that we're looking at here is what came out of the last draft meeting. Um, that for the most part we kind of agreed with the language at that time. For, for any kind of closure is probably like like, like uh, they already mentioned here. Our goal is, and so we want to go through this this rule and make sure that we can achieve that. Um, so I guess ultimately we want to kind of take a look at this that there's. Folks have had an opportunity to kind of look at this again, you know, after the last meeting, up until now. Do they have anything they want to add or talk about? Um, at this point, would be a great time to do that. Um, and then we'll go and look and see what what DOJ provided as a as some further input. And a lot of it was formatting, and there was some other other touches on it that kind of circled around some things we had discussed. Yeah, and so for um, what we're looking at 
now um, they're uh, deleted during the last meeting. And the blue text um, is what we talked about. We, it, we, we yeah. talked about during the meeting and we added it af after the meeting. Yeah, so these are the changes we made. So we added the parallel line for identifying. Turner Island, um, by starting tag. And then we've also identified the terminating at the northern boundary. So originally we put the, that long there. Um, Do we want to look at a map real quick? Yeah. Yeah. We map. And I did revise the uh, last, you can see a map as opposed to the images we had last time. We'll take a look at the map and then we'll see a little bit more of what we're talking about. So um, I can make this bigger for those of y'all in the room. We're, we'll just lose the legend down at the bottom. That's okay. For me. I can explain that. That's all. Thank you all down here and then. Um, could you make it just a skosh bigger, please? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you see where the stone Let's bridge. Start on the north. Yeah, start on the north in there with stone bridge location. So in the draft of that on the total map actually identified pretty well pretty well um, where that is dots are actually um, points where we post or we have pre previously posted our restrictions. Um, so it kind of helps identify where those will be um, to the public. And then those, and what I work to do on the roads, um, I've worked with the BLM on getting some more um, GIS there because the roads kind of help they go through. Um, then we also have the ownership on there as well. So we can see the blue is the DSL property. Um, and then there's the gray the private. We have a little bit of um, conservation. Ownership in there too, which is like the pinkish color, and the green being the refuge, and then the, the BLM land as well. And I have another map um, that we're not presenting middle of that line, um, and that's the essentially the, par the parallel kind of showing where oh, that's at. About right there. Yeah, about right there. And it is actually on the total map that there's yeah. a. So that is our trigger point for closure. If the lake is dry down to that parallel line, that is when we may enact. Yeah, once closure. water hits that point, is when we're going to actually start posting. Excuse me, my audio is not that great, but the line is basically the, the boundary, correct? So, so that line right there is our trigger line. It tells us when the water has receded to that point. That's when we're going to start posting. Um, it just like it's essentially an administrative identifier for us. Say, like, hey, it hits that line. We need to go out there and post it. So once the water drops below that line, is that at that point those lands are closed off? So entirely the lake. Yeah, we'll go. So as I was asking, so basically, as the water drops below, and you can go to another that map if you'd like. Yeah. Um, the water drops below that line and recedes below it, south of it. At that point, these state lands, and that's the entirety of the lake, is closed. 
There is new language that defines when it's closed. Yes. So, so we'll, we'll go, yeah, we'll start talking about the DOJ um, comments. It does clear that up a little bit. So that's why I say that line is kind of more of an administrative identifier yeah. where we're going to say, okay, we have identified it you know, by our planet imagery, being out in the field, coordinating with OSP. Um, can we're I gonna go out and post it? Can I read the language? Yeah, yeah, actually. Is go that ahead. okay? Yeah, I, don't, I can share. So the department will determine closure when the water is no longer touching the foundational rocks located along the parallel line of Turn Island. Located at that Latin long, the department has sole discretion to determine when the water level meets the criteria for closure. All designated public access routes will be posted. Upon posting, the official closure through this rule becomes effective. So it's not effective until it's posted. <laughs> That came from the Department of Justice, their input. We had, I know we had some conversations around that as well. So hopefully that clears that up a little bit. So people are confused. You know, is it when the water receives? Is it when it's posted? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. So yeah, so it's the turn island location really is just the trigger, and that will allow us to be able to coordinate with OSP and our other partners and also give us time to get down there and post it so the public's aware. And we can also talk about if we need to do local newspaper yeah. postings as an announcement also. Yeah, because we did hear that from you earlier, that it would be better to almost be posted, additionally be posted in the, in the newspaper. Um, I don't see that need. Yeah. So I'm issue. now sharing the okay. DOJ language. Excellent. So yeah, here is the, the language as provided by DOJ. Um, you, there's um, been some close the top part. some reconfiguration of the language, some added there's language the on the that helps clear up some yeah. of the issues we heard. Carrot, uh, on, the carrot right. on the far right. Oh, where the big glare is. Yeah, you probably got a glare on the screen. That yeah, right there. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, perfect. All right. Can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. I'll just scroll up this image. It's sharing on. Yes, it yep, is. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Thank you. It's good. Um, Okay, yeah, so these are um, the rules as provided by DOJ's revision. Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of read through a little bit of each paragraph. Uh, so it identifies a still same northern boundary, um, and then it also provides a termination point um, to the south, which is Township 39 South. Um, and I can pop up open a new map here in a second kind of ident identifies that on the new map that I have. Um, so it helps kind of show the boundaries of our ownership of where this is actually going to be an effect. Um, that, that last map didn't really show that very well. Um, and then we kind of moved it to expand a little bit on our bullet points. So this is um, under bullet point one, it talks about all access um, by motorized vehicles or pedestrian traffic accepted from this restriction are government personnel on official business, vehicles and persons involved in rescue or emergency activities, adjacent landowners inspecting or maintaining fences, and hunters on foot with valid controlled hunt deer, um, controlled hunt deer and animal tags for crumply and exercising that tag, unless otherwise authorized by the department in the night. So those are kind of lays out a little bit. So, the exceptions. So basically, they just took that whole exception draft from the one that we were talking about before. They that. moved it into subsection one, and then they included a small piece where it says, unless otherwise authorized by the department. Right. Exactly. That was the only actual change. They adopted our writing, they just moved it they around. They just moved it around. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Lawyers to justify their. Existence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was, a lot of it was kind of make sure it was clear that we had department authorized persons before. Did we? Yeah. Where was that? It, it was in the exception. Oh, so yeah, we just, but we wanted to, so when it says, unless otherwise authorized by the department in writing, that means that we actually have to issue them right. an access agreement, yes. which we talked about. So, again, not a lot of changes there. Um, and then number two, um, is a little bit of additional 
information here too, which is the collection, removal, defacement, or destruction of any archaeological site, objects, or artifacts included, including arrowheads as defined by ORS 358.9051A, unless authorized, otherwise authorized by the department in writing and consistent with the permit issued by the State Historic Preservation Office under ORS 390.235. Um, and that's just when there's, you know, permits issued or whatever by SHPO. They'd be in line with that. Um, and then it goes on to say the department will determine closure when the water is no longer touching the foundational rocks located along the parallel line of Turner Island, located at in these lat or, or parallel. The department has sole discretion to determine whether the water level meets the criteria for closure. All designated public access routes will be posted upon posting the official closure through this rule becomes effective. This just alleviates the public or anybody else having to figure out is it closed or not closed. We'll just we'll make that determination. We'll post it when that's going to be enforced. Um, actually, I'd like to bring up the new map. It's in the yeah. I have map. it. Okay, perfect. Just need to. Folks online, are you hearing us okay? And then in the meantime, I noticed Tyler, you had your hand up um, for a question. <clears throat> this is Tyler with OHA. I, it can wait until we start discussing the draft rule again. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this highlighted square. It's not working. Can you just click somewhere in that? Uh, uh oh, what do you do? I Flip the screen somehow. I did something <laughs> I've never done before. Just drag it to the bottom. Yeah, drag it. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. There we go. We got it. Okay. So, yeah, there again kind of identifies Turn Island, the parallel. Those yellow dots are all points where we will post and have previously since 2014. So, there's Currently, most of those locations just have T posts, and then we'll come out there with our posts, our sign. And just to clarify, the western boundary is the county road, the paved county road, where those yellow dots are on the west, and then on the east side, that is the dirt BLM road, and then various uh, two tracks off that. I know um, there was a question about the. 39 South location, if we could scroll to the bottom. And our ownership essentially follows that line right there in the bottom. So basically, if we can look at that, would be under restriction. Do okay. we want to go back to the rule text now? Yeah, that would go back and then answer any questions or have that conversation. Forget for Tyler's question. Okay. Tyler, you can go ahead and ask your question now. Yeah, this is Tyler with OHA. Uh, just wanted to ask you there's some new language in there under the exception for hunters with the addition of exercising tag. Um, that Was that presented by the DOJ or was that OSP? Correct, it was. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's unnecessary. Um, I think we spoke last time about the fact that these tags are highly coveted and they take a very long time to draw and exercising tag is pretty vague and I don't know if that would exclude hunters that are there prior to the season um, scouting for those highly coveted tags that they have. It just seems unnecessary. I think and, their concern was that someone was going to have a control hunt tag for a different unit and they were like hey we have you know he wanted to be very specific just in case you know okay. the worst case scenario is you know, someone's going to come up with something so if we want to have add some language that makes it very specific that they're at that location to exercise that tag 
or you know, for that unit. Yeah, and the um, unit map showed Warner Valley as its own unit. It's not part of the Heart Mountain unit. And that would be Beatty's Butte, right? And John, John's on the call, John Muir's on the yeah, call, and yeah. he could clarify Beatty's for Beatty's. us, but um, right, that, that pronghorn tag is a Beatty's Butte pronghorn hunt. Um, I, I see your point, like if you had a, it doesn't specify that a hunter has to have a valid tag for this unit. Um, it's his concern. But yeah. yeah, we should probably flush that out. Um, and maybe, maybe not to put John on the spot here, but maybe he could suggest. That's what we're yeah, that's, I mean, it's, that's exactly what we're here to flush things, these types of things out. So um, if we have some alternative language that we think would work better there, um, it'd be great to hear what that, what that may be, any proposals. Anybody from OSP have any? input on what may work for, for that in lieu of just the, you know again the concern being that someone's just gonna say they have a control tag maybe for that unit or well I don't know that there's gonna be any changes this is Ryan Neas uh, state police to the unit itself um if there were we could go ahead and change that but you could probably put in there a Beatty's view uh, controlled hunt deer and or antelope tags. And I don't know if you wanted to do a timeline, they could be scout form or just put in the ver verbiage that they could scout for it as well as during the hunt. Okay. Because obviously you're not going to go out as a hunter day of. You're gonna you're gonna be out yeah. there scouting for it. Up to you know probably three months ahead prior to the season there. You know, and um that makes sense. looking for these animals potentially. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. While they're swimming in the water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I do guess. Yeah. John, are you on ODFW? This is Sergeant Tag. I think John's on the road, so he wasn't able to stay yeah. connected. Okay. But I, for me, um, I can't find the hand raise button, but <laughs> it disappeared on me. Okay. But uh, I would say that maybe it's um, actively engaged in hunting or scouting with a valid um, might be your your thing because exercising tag is not a term we use normally. Okay. Uh, actively engaged is something we use in several statutes and laws. Okay. okay. Yeah, that sounds good. good. And it's really going to limit the scope and time, anyways, because you don't. Uh, this year they'll put out tag notifications June twelfth. Okay. So before that, people don't know. They've just applied for it. Gotcha. Right? But they haven't actually drawn, paid for, and, and confirmed they're going to get that. <laughs> that, that, that okay. Perfect. Does that work? This is this is Tyler with OHA. That works for me. Engaged in scouting. And in, in scouting, yeah. In, yeah. scouting or yeah. Yeah. Do we want to change for Crump Lake since it really doesn't? You know, Crump Lake. You'd be for um, baby you. Yeah. Okay, y'all are gonna have to spell that for me. B -B -A I got it for you right here. This is Tyler with OHA. It's B E A T Y S, and then space Butte B U T T E. Okay, and you could uh, specify further and say tags for Beatty's Butte Wildlife Management Unit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Great. Okay, sounds great. With that, is there any other points on this that need to be further discussed? If anybody has any other input, that last sentence is a run on or a fragment that needs something else, or unless, yeah, or unless. Yeah. Unless, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
So, um, are there any objections to the language as it is? Oh, Tyler, you have your hand raised. Yeah, this is Tyler with OHA. Um, I think the last sentence is great because it, it leaves you know, options for a lot of different users to still be able to use Crump Lake there even during low water periods. Um, just had a question. I know we discussed this last time about exceptions for, for waterfowl hunting and for upland game bird hunting. Um, it's not clear in the draft rule and maybe it doesn't need to be, but it's not clear as to how those individuals who are seeking access for those activities are able to, to get that access or to get that um, note in writing that they are allowed to waterfowl hunt. And maybe you guys have some suggestions as to where that can be posted or how, how otherwise how that outreach is going to be available to people. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we normally put contact information in rule. Yeah. We could say through the real property program. Yeah, that could be one way of getting um, it. And that I would zero in. could indicate where they could go look for information. Mm -hmm. Unless otherwise authorized by the department in writing. Yeah. Through the, through the real property program. program. Yeah. I apologize, I need to step out. Uh, thank you for doing this meeting. Absolutely. And uh, just open her up. Sounds good. That's all I got. Thank you. You have my cell number? Oh, you do? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Have a great day. You sleeping over here? <laughs> what? You sleeping over here? <laughs> I, my cell's not working. I'm not getting in here. Yeah. So we have to day or yeah. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. All right. So, um, with the language as is, um, do we have any objections or comments? Um, I, I will note there's an additional sentence in section two. Um, yep. And it was read out loud, but that would be for archaeological research as permitted by the State Historic Preservation Office. We didn't want to disclude that use. That there's permitting through that, for that reason, for that purpose, well, there was an exception. But then, of course, it's kind of the same as with the hunting. You have to have enough of permit to prove that. Authorization to do that. Um, and Les, I see that you have your hand raised. Um, I can't recall, are you a member of the RAC or oh, a member of the RAC? Thank you. Sorry. So, Les, go ahead. Yes, no, I, I just to add on to that, uh, that about the archaeological permitting. Yeah, mo most any kind of projects that go through there, which there's been one recently with the fiber optics line, that there's, there's normally a, well, there's not normally, there is a permit that goes hand in hand with the work that's being done out there. So I think that's pretty well covered. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that was kind of a little thing right there. Um, and any other comments on the language from the RAC members? If I if I might add a little bit to that as well, um, during that permitting process, also uh, for uh, other parties, uh, state with uh, there is that comment period as well. So there is that chance to to comment during that permitting process. Okay, thank you. Yeah, perfect. And then seeing no objections to this rule language, um, I am assuming that we have consensus from our RAC members on the language as it is now. Okay. Hearing no objections, um, I'm going to say this is the language that we will move forward with our public comment period. And then we have 
two other statements that we need to um, have reviewed by the RAC. Find my cursor. RAC, fiscal impact statement. Yes. So as part of the notice of public rulemaking, we are required to um, have a fiscal impact statement and a racial equity statement. And what we've done is we've drafted the racial equity statement where it, it says, you know, the RAC discussed this, um, or the department has determined, we'll get to that. Um, and that was with the intention that we were going to be discussing it with the RAC, and this is what we will be publishing. So, um, Sean, do you want to go over this? Yeah. Okay. I'll start with the um, final RAC statement here. Yeah, so the draft racial equity statement. Uh, the Oregon Department of State Lands is committed to the fair, just, and unbiased treatment of people of all races, uh, actively identifying and addressing inequities to ensure inclusive public service is one of the department's five core values, evaluating who a proposed administrative vote impact and how the world may impact some groups of people differently than others, is essential to providing equitable service. During the restrictions for state owned property on Crump Lake and Lake County rulemaking process. The department and the rulemaking advisory committee examine the following to ultimately determine the impacts the rule may have on racial equity. Uh, what persons and groups are subject to the rule? A RAC discussion identified a number of groups affected by the rule. They include small businesses, recreational users, guides, and outfielders, law enforcement, and other local agencies. Uh, what issues is the rule seeking to address? Which racial groups are likely to be affected by those issues? The rule seeks to address nuisance issues on state-owned property. Uh, ultimately, what impacts does this rule have on racial equity? The department has determined in agreement with the RAC and through careful consideration and evaluation that this rule is unlikely to impact racial equity in Oregon. Having said all those things, it's an opportunity for us to provide if there's anybody has any input on that. And just to clarify with that first bullet, we did talk about the small businesses and the and the meeting. and the initial meeting, just for a reminder. Okay. Now on to the draft fiscal oh, one well, thing I would, add, I would add to that. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of trying to think make sure yeah. think through okay. this. Um, should there be anything in what persons or groups are subject to the rule? Um, one of those groups could be uh, tribal or indigenous um, nations. Yep. And um, of course, the impact is still going to be the same. It's uh, unlikely to impact because they can still get a hold of the agency and yeah. request any sort of permits to get on there, which yeah. there should be no issues being, but they'd be there for uh, yeah. their cultural heritage. Yeah, I agree. That's okay. Be um, how do we want to phrase that? Um, indigenous. I think. Or what, uh, what you don't mean, so that there's, a, there's probably an official term. When, um, we usually talk about the nine federally recognized tribes. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, so less, a a less, federally recognized rod. Oh, less, you you've raised your hand. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, and you touched on that. The the uh, the nine recognized tribes. Yeah, perfect. I think that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Got that. <laughs> Any other comments about the racial equity statement? Any other additions? So next we have our fiscal and economic impact statement. Yeah. Um, the department does not anticipate this rulemaking to pose significant fiscal and economic impact to public or private interests. The proposed rule seeks to address illegal and nuisance activities on state-owned land. There are no developed or authorized uses at these locations outside of grazing. 
the proposed rule language takes into consideration and makes exceptions for government personnel on official business, public and private employees performing company business, vehicles and persons involved in rescue or emergency activities, and department authorized persons and adjacent landowners inspecting or maintaining property. We'll need to update we'll this. We'll have to update that to include the other things. The hunters, added. yes. Yep. Hunter, and then also um, the native uh, England and tribal so, members. Or anybody who has some permits for our yeah. Um the adjacent or let's see, the draft rule language is consistent with existing recreational restrictions and OAR 141088 will protect state-owned lands from damage and will assist in the posting of sites around Crump Lake from use during low water periods throughout the year. The permanent use restrictions are one element of a long-term solution for ensuring a healthy environment and protection of cultural and archaeological resources. Um, before we move on to the next, because it's a big chunk and I yeah, have to scroll. Um, other than um, we have to adjust the language in there to reflect the new, the revised rule yeah. language. Um, are there any comments from the RAC members? Okay. okay. The department does not believe that the proposed changes oh, to this. Sorry, sorry. You're fine. I got it on my slide. Too. <laughs> this new computer is a little more sensitive. Um, Gary has his hand raised. Oh, Gary, go ahead. Hi, hi everybody. Um, yeah, get. Can you go back down to the end of that statement there for a minute? No, the other direction, uh, Sean. The one. Keep going. Um, where was the place I just said for? Archaeological and cultural well, purposes. Yeah. Where was that? If you go, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. So, right there, I think it's a little bit redundant to say cultural and archaeological resources. I think it'd be better if we had something in there that said for the protection of natural and cultural resources. Perfect. Thank you. Does yes, that make you. sense? It does. Cultural resources are archaeological. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. All right. Let's give a thumbs up. Thank you, Les. Okay. The department does not believe that the proposed changes to this rule, if adopted, will have any substantial economic impact on the public or state or local government agencies. Possible economic impacts include, but are not limited to, one increased cost of the department to the department for the manufacture and placement of signs, and the publication of public notices describing the restrictions on or closure to public recreational use. Two increased costs to state and local law enforcement, as any restriction or closure is another activity that state and local law enforcement must monitor. State and local law enforcement were informed of the restrictions and are in support of the proposed rule. Uh, only so I'm going to stop there. Is there anything you want to add? To that? Any comments on that? Okay. Uh, only small businesses that use state owned land for recreational purposes may be impacted by any restriction or closures imposed on recreational use. And only if such restrictions or closure were imposed on a site, parcel, or area of state owned land, which is small business. In currently uses or may want to use in the future. It is not feasible to estimate the number of such small businesses. However, it is unlikely that there will be any significant costs for small businesses to comply with the proposed rule. The department does not believe that the proposed rule, if adopted, will result in increased costs for reporting, record keeping, and other administrative activities conducted by small businesses. The department does not believe the proposed rule, if adopted, will result in increased costs for equipment, supply, labor, or administration. So the gist of it is that the the cost, if there's any increase in cost, it'll be on the department. Yeah, that's that's the bottom line. That's what we're going Stay on.
Any comments on this language? Does anybody reach out to the sheriff's office and see if they're um, on this or? I have not. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has. I know I have not reached out to the sheriff's office. We typically work with state police. Yeah, it's been usually. Yeah, it just says it's local in there too. Okay. Local law enforcement. Sorry. Any questions? We're sorry to tag. Sorry, Tag. Have has the Lake Camp Sheriff's Office been advised of this at all? Uh sorry, Tag. I don't know if they have. Um, they would actually probably reduce costs because they usually end up out there on trespass. Um, that's related to this. So, but yeah, I mean, no, they haven't been uh, formally notified that I know of. Let's add them to the list. Yeah. Reach out to them and they have some revisions to this. Anything else to add to the impact statement? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, um, that concludes our RAC discussion. Do we have any um, comments from the public? I believe he's logged off. Okay. Well, we appreciate the time you've taken out of your schedules to join us for this RAC meeting and your input has been very valuable and appreciated. Um, once um, our next step in this process is to do our notice of proposed rulemaking, which kicks off our public comment period, which would be 30 days long. And we're anticipating the publication of that to be July 1st, which is a Saturday, but we'll have everything scheduled to go out um, on a Saturday morning as far as like uh, automated emails and notifications to the public. So that way we can um, get as much input as, as uh, we can. Um, so again, and we'll email the RAC members as well to let them know that the public comment period has begun. And um, are there any other questions at this time regarding the process? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you very all. much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. There's no cursor. Thank you, Les.